Hey everyone, welcome back to It's Tech Time. Today we will cover how to install and use the Tor Browser. This video covers downloading the Tor Browser, setting the initial security settings, connecting to Tor if your ISP or internet service provider is blocking Tor. But before we begin, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more tech and privacy related content. For most people, the easiest way to download Tor is simply to go to the Tor's website and download the version of the Tor browser you need for your operating system. Now, if you happen to live somewhere that's blocking the download of Tor browser, Tor does have some mirrors available and other ways to download Tor browser, and I will give a link to this website in the video notes below. But for this example, we're going to be installing this on a Windows machine, so I'm simply going to click download for Windows. I'm going to download the executable file. Then I'm going to run the executable we just downloaded. And the first question is going to be my language. It's going to be English for me. And it's going to ask for the install location. I usually just do the desktop to make it easier to find in this situation. So I'll click install. And then once it's finished setting up, you have the option to instantly run tour and to add a start menu to it. I will always leave these selected and I'll click finish. Now the first time tour comes up, it's gonna look like this. And you'll have a configure connection option and a connect option. And while it's tempting to hit connect right off the bat with tour, I'm going to suggest you go into settings and set the security settings before you connect. And to do that, we simply click on this menu icon that looks like a hamburger and go to settings. This will open up the settings on another tab and I'll enlarge this so you can see a little bit better. And then I'm going to select privacy and security. I'm going to make sure the delete cookies and site data when Tor browser is closed is selected and it should automatically be selected. I'm going to scroll down to security level and at the very least I suggest you select the middle option for safer where it disables JavaScript. And then I always suggest that you select block dangerous and deceptive content and block dangerous downloads. That should be your main security concern with Tor or going on what's called the dark web is that you, may that you may download something that is malicious and this will help keep you from doing that. With all that selected, I can simply just click connect here or I can close this tab, go back to the main screen and click connect here. One thing I forgot to mention is if you live somewhere where Tor is being blocked and you need to enable a bridge so that you can connect to Tor, you would do that in the settings. So we'll go back to the settings menu and under connection, you'll have an option for bridges. Now Tor has several built-in options for you that's going to work for most people that are watching this video. But in case one of those options don't work for you, you can request a bridge officially and then make you solve a compacha to make sure you're human. And then it's going to cycle through the different bridges you have available until you get a stable connection. And to verify that you actually have a stable connection, you're met with these little icons here. And these will be different depending on the bridge you're connecting to. And then if none of those work, or if you're like me and you host your own bridge, or if you know somebody that you trust that hosts a bridge, you can add their bridge manually to your connection by listing its IP address and port number here, and then clicking OK, and it will connect. And then when it successfully connects, I'm met with those icons here at the top again. And if you click on their official documentation of what these are, these are these are bridge emojis. Each bridge address is represented by a string of emo emoji characters. And these are used to validate that the intended bridge has been added successfully. These are human readable identifiers, but they do not represent the quality of the connection. And you can't use them as input for connecting to a bridge. And so just to verify that my connection is on here, I am in fact accessing the internet and it shows that I'm still connected to the same bridge. So should you use a VPN to hide your IP address when connecting to Tor? In my opinion, the only time that would be necessary would be if you're somewhere where the ISP is blocking Tor. Otherwise, the fact that Tor relays do not log your IP address would make it unnecessary to use VPN in my opinion because the ISP will see that a VPN is used in to connect to Tor in the first place. And if you're trying to do something illegal and use this as a way around it, most VPNs log your information and will give it to the authorities if they do come knocking. But if you wanna use a VPN to hide your IP address, this is what you would do. So first you would close all open browsers. And once you have everything closed, you will connect to VPN. And in my case, it's gonna be NordVPN. What you're using will be different depending on the VPN you're using. I'm using Nord. If you, if you want to try out Nord for yourself, I'll have a discount link to this in my video notes. Once VPN is connected, 
I will reopen the Tor browser. And this time when it connects, it's getting the IP address that the VPN is giving off, not my actual IP address. So you have an extra layer of coverage on top of this information as it's going over the three Tor relays. So in this situation, you have the VPN with one layer of protection, you have the guard relay with another layer of protection, you have a middle relay with a, yet another layer of protection, and you have the exit relay with yet another layer of protection. Looking at it in one run like that, it's just added level of protection. Now, another way you can use Tor is through a virtual machine. Again, this is completely optional. It just gives you an extra layer of security. Say, for example, you do download something malicious by accident. If it's on this virtual machine, you can just wipe it away. Uh, this example on the screen, here is for virtual bot and I still set the same security settings that I do on any machine and everything looks exactly the same the only difference is that if I was to download something and it was malicious the chances of it escaping the virtual machine or Oracle virtual box and get into my main machine is really low it's not impossible but it's a lot lower than if I was just running Tor browser on my own machine another option for using the Tor browser and probably the one the way that I do it the most often, especially if I'm inspecting an email trying to see if it's malicious or not, is using Tor through a Chasm workspace that's on a virtual private server. It's a little overkill for most people's situations, but I just think it's really cool. And if you want to learn how to set up a Chasm workspace yourself, I'll link a video here to it. Now, if, you're ever, if your connection ever gets stuck loading relay information, an easy way to fix it is to click cancel and to click connect again, and usually it instantly finishes like that. The beauty of all this is that this is all in a Docker container and nothing is being logged. So as soon as you're finished or if you download something malicious, you just delete the session and everything from that session is instantly deleted. Downloads, usernames, websites, everything. Now another really private, really secure way to use the Tor browser is to use the, the Tails operating system. Now this is what Edward Snowden did, is famous for doing, was, and I'll show you how to do that. Now Tails is considered a portable operating system. What you'll do is you'll boot your PC up to a USB and it loads everything up in RAM. So when you reboot your computer, there's, there's nothing still around, it's instantly deleted. And I'll walk through exactly how to set up your USB for Tails in the next video. But you'll, be, you'll boot to USB and you'll be met with a screen similar to this and we're going to click start tails but as you can see there's also an option to create persistent storage if you want to store something on this on your usb but be very careful about doing that because anybody that has this usb will have access to this information you store there so i'm going to click start tails it will instantly come up with a tor connection screen we're going to do connect automatically since this is all loading in ram anyway you don't have to be considered with security settings on here if you need to configure a tor bridge you select that option i shouldn't need it for this situation i'll click connect and it's going to say it's connected and we'll start Tor browser and then Tails instantly loads to this screen here. And the cool thing about Tails is all the stuff that comes built into it. You'll have Thunderbird, you'll have KeyPass, you'll have OpenOffice already there for you. So you can really do anything you want to off this USB stick. And then once it restarts, everything is deleted unless you set up persistent storage. And it's really easy to set up persistent storage. So if you want to store your passwords in there and you'll password protect the storage area itself. Again, we'll walk through all this in the next video. I'm gonna put a link below to our Discord group. Feel free to join our Discord group and leave any questions and comments about this video you've had. If you have a strong opinion about using a VPN or not using a VPN, let me know. If you've tried out the Tails USB, let me know how it went. You can leave all those comments and questions in our Discord group where I'm pretty fast to reply, or you can leave a comment on this video, or you can go to our website and leave a comment and send us an email there. And these are all the different ways to securely install and use the Tor browser. If you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up. Be sure to hit the bell icon and subscribe so you know the next time the video comes out. And don't forget to share this with anyone who might benefit from learning about online privacy. 